Oh, hello, it's me again. I got another deck for you. And yeah, yesterday we brought you some Woodland Spirit action. Now we're going to give you a deck that only loses to Woodland Spirit. I know that doesn't sound like a great selling point, but uh, this deck does really well against everything but Woodland Spirit. So uh, nonetheless, I've titled this deck Dragon Zord. I don't know why. I'm really bad with names. I just saw a lot of green. It is a Scoia'tael deck. It is Eldane. And uh, Dragon Zord, because Green Ranger, best Ranger. Nonetheless, here is Dragon Zord. It's a trap! Alrighty, so we're going to go with Eldane this time. This is a leader that doesn't really get all that much love uh, on the ladder or, you know, in casual even, but it's a lot of fun. It's a little bit more high skill cap, I find. It took me a lot of tweaking and just practice in terms of how to play the deck without losing round one and maximizing your late round, when to use the, the leader ability effectively and when not to. Uh, nonetheless, I'll go through the cards once again and give you the basic strategy and the choice selections. So here we go. Again, Eldane is your leader with 16 provisions, so you got a lot of room to, to grow and uh, fit some great cards in there. But nonetheless, we always go with our quick uh, bronzes. We have one times Dwarven Skirmisher. Um, Cap of five with a three point removal, always effective. Two Scoia'tael Neophytes. And the reason why I'm going with the Scoia'tael Neophyte in the four spot is that it spawns two elves because we're going to want to eventually work to get Aileron out. So that's what we got two Scoia'tael Neophytes. I've got two Elven Scouts. We're playing traps, so this is a good, uh, easy way to throw sort of throw down points that could always, uh, you know, cap out at five, seven, nine points, depending on if it's answered or not. I have two Vriad Dragoons. Always good to move something to the back row if it's being a pain in the ass, but at the same time, it's good to use to line up these massive crushing traps. So this is definitely a card that you want to use. Uh, two of in the four provision slot, very effective. I have two Broccolon Sentinels, two damage and thinning plays, no harm, no foul. A great little card to throw in there that has been very effective. All right. Uh, and now we get to the traps, two incinerating traps. These are the throwaway traps. These are not really all that great. Nonetheless, they do come into play uh, in a round three. I do like this. It's just a cheap trap and you want some traps. But besides the value of the five off of the, the ambush, you also get to flip it into a three-point uh, elf with the Eldane ability. So it's pretty good in that regard. Nonetheless, this is the trap that, I mean, playing it early on, I find people tend to figure it out and drop uh, really ineffective cards or low quality cards. So um, this this trap is not the best, obviously. I mean, it's five provision, but uh, I like to play this trap later in rounds than earlier when a lot of the your opponent is done throwing away their toss away bronzes or their death wish bronzes. All right, two times crushing trap. Great, great, great card. Uh, when you're playing this card, I mean, you can fairly do it liberally early on and really try to bamboozle your opponent a lot of the times in round three your opponent will always think of either uh you know pitfall trap or crush uh, or you know um even a horn in, in certain cases but crushing trap is really what is going to either win you round one or really get extra value in round three uh and that is it for the bronze now let's go to the gold package i have milva Milva in the seven slot. I did have this instead with the Triant Trap there, the Mantis Trap, but I preferred this because it is, um, it's points that you can't touch. Immunity is gonna be very important in round three as we'll discuss a little later. So Milva in the three drop slot. I've got Karen uh, for the movement and lock ability. Plus five points of strength is nothing to laugh at either. Triant Boar. Triant Boar I like to throw away uh, or toss on the board in round one to sort of gain some, um, you know, some some point generation or some damage, some cooldown. And the Triant Boar is definitely a great card. And at the same time, if he gets, uh, um, you know, some damage slapped on him, you can go ahead and drop a Dragoon to move him to the uh, front row and then use his orders to heal him up. So there are uh, definitely some... Um, some avenues you can take with Triant Boar, but it's definitely a card that can, uh, you know, if, if unanswered, can win you around. Uh, Mahakim Horn, of course, this is a great, great uh, card for you as well. Mahakim Horn goes down, and like um, the old version, when it's um, when your opponent passes, deals a crap, uh, or it uh, gives you a bunch of, uh, you know, boosty boost on each side, four on each flank of the horn. And usually I flank this with Milva and say synthesis, so nothing is going to happen to those points. 
Uh, it's a really, really good trap that I always like to have in round three. Pitfall trap. This is what is going to crush your opponent's finishers. And they're always going to be playing around this. Now, the great part is, is if you play pitfall trap um, and you then your with it back into your hand, it really puts your opponent into a corner. It forces their win condition out earlier, knowing that you have a, a pitfall trap in hand. Uh, you you can whiff on this for sure. If your opponent's hanging on to some low value cards, but at the same time, you can hit some significant home runs with the pitfall trap. It's all going to come down to reading your opponent and figuring out what he has in his hand. But this has been uh, our, this is an auto include, obviously. Um, Skytel doesn't have that many traps, uh, but this is definitely one that you want to throw in there. All right, Fav. Now Fav or Brett Fav or I don't know what you want to call it. Nonetheless, it is a uh, it's just a tutor card to get out. Um, uh, to get another card out of your deck and the nature card we're going to take is going to be call of the forest and the reason why we play call of the forest is because we're going to use this to recycle any number of cards now keep in mind you are going to be using eldane's ability to flip useless traps into elves call of the forest can then recycle one of those elves for something much better like a malayan or a yorvith or whatnot at the same time if you are slick enough to get out uh your aileron because you have all the elves on the board, you can use Call of the Forest on Aileron to put her back in your deck, get a much better and boosted uh, elf onto the uh, table, but then at the same time, Aileron just pops right back out because you have all the elves still there. So Aileron is uh, usually your prime target, but don't be afraid to get something better. Uh, it's also pretty good. You can use Call of the Forest on one of your uh, neophytes, your two-point neophytes, to recycle one of those really low-cost bronzes into a higher value uh, gold card like Milan. Now Milan has been a really uh, good card in here. It's four point removal of an engine, let's say, or it's just spreading around one damage. Uh, this is an MVP against a Rockus Queen or any uh, deck that has a bunch of shields, let's say. So I've, uh, I've found great value with Milan. And uh, the last two big cards that we have here, actually, sorry, I got Yorvith. Yorvith is gonna recycle you a trap towards the end. Now it's gonna be a, a choice uh, based on what the situation is. Sometimes you want to recycle uh, your horn. You can trigger your horn, don't forget, you can click on a trap at any point on your turn to trigger it. So what I sometimes like to do is I like to trigger my horn for six points and then drop down Yorvith, replay the horn for, uh, trigger it again for another six points and then flip that horn into an elf so really that's a 15 point play plus the three points for yorvith it's an 18 point play just with that so that's something to think about but you might want to replay a pitfall trap to eliminate two of your opponent's uh, win conditions i've done that as well you really pin them into a corner if you're leading by points in the um and your opponent has one more card and you recycle your pitfall trap a lot of the times they're not holding on to a special they're holding on to a, uh, a unit and in which case at that point, that unit is useless because Pitfall Trap, like we should go in and look at real quick, uh, it, it destroys the unit before any of its opponents uh, or of its abilities are triggered. So no deploy effects, no nothing. So it just touches this, the board and ev instantly evaporates. Uh, say Synthesis as well. Say Synthesis is a uh, eight point immunity auto included in this deck. You wanna protect the points as you're just dropping down your traps. Um, a lot of your points come in later. Like I say, I don't play for, I don't pay for express shipping on points. Not what I do. I like to make sure that all my points come late game. So there's going to be a lot of times where you have three cards left and you're behind by 20 or 25 points. Don't worry about it. Those points are coming back. I promise for you. Uh, so say synthesis. And finally, your big finisher is great Oak. So, uh, great Oak obviously has a bigger, uh, impact on the board for as many units you have on a particular row. So think about it in advance, which row you want to go on. Usually it's the range row, uh, but what you're going to be doing with the Great Oak is playing this last or close to last or very strategically in order to go ahead and uh, get as much points uh, from this as, as you can. Usually there's six or seven cards on a row, meaning that this card over here is worth 15 with the 13 point provision. So uh, it's, and it, it has the versatility of going ahead and you know doing damage, boosting, and really uh, maximizing that potential. But keep in mind, if a trap is flipped over, it does not count. It does not count as one of the cards or units on the row. So if your trap hasn't triggered yet, you cannot count that to the left or the right of Great Oak. It just does not count. All right.
There's the list. Now let's go real quick through the strategies. Usually early on, what you want to do is you want to mulligan away as many traps as possible, except, except if you have a crushing trap or uh, or a horn, because those are your traps that you want to use to win round one. It's either one or the other. Preferably, you want to have the horn for late game in round three, and you want to keep one of the crushing traps in round one. Crushing trap can really win you around in round one, uh, and it's okay. You have plenty of other traps, so just use it strategically and make sure that you do not need all your Eldane charges in round three. Uh, three. So you can usually get away with using one in round one, maybe two if you can really win around favorably, but you want to pretty much mulligan away your pitfall trap, mulligan away uh, incinerating traps and, and stuff like that. Just try to hang on to a, whore, uh, a crushing trap and a lot of the bronzes. In terms of gold value you want to use early, you can use Milan early, you can use your Triant Boar for sure you want to use it early, even Karen if you could, uh, but make sure that you're setting up uh, for a round three that is literally four or five traps so your opponent has nothing to interact with and your you, uh, your uh, immune points of say synthesis and Milva are just gonna be there to collect points. Now, I usually open round three with a Mahakam Horn and let them dump a, a garbage card onto the board because they think it might be an incinerating trap uh, and then you go from there. And don't be afraid uh, to use your uh, incinerating trap, sorry, your um, Use your pitfall trap sometimes in a, in a really odd spot. Give your opponent something to think about. If your opponent has three or four cards left, maybe drop it then instead of waiting for a finisher piece. They, you might catch them off guard, especially if you have Yorbeth. Now, keep in mind that uh, Aileron is going to come out of the deck when you flip your useless traps into elves. She'll shoot out, and then you can play Fav to get uh, your Call of the Forest to then recycle uh, one of your low-value low elves to go get Yorvith or Milan or Karen or one of your bigger elves, drop it back on the board. So there's really a lot of point generation that you can get uh, down the line. This is a difficult deck to play, and it is very, very much unfavored against uh, Woodland Spirit. I've tried it a million times against Woodland Spirit. I don't know if it's just my draws are poor, but it's not working out against Woodland Spirit because uh, they tend to push and bleed really, really well. Uh, nonetheless, friends, I, I'm telling you this, a uh, little practice with this. You want to play units early and traps in round three and try not to mix and match too much. But I had a lot of fun with this list. Uh, I'm going to be playing it going forward and maybe uh, show some gameplay footage of a, of a game that really went really well so you guys can see how it goes. Nonetheless, let's go really quickly again through the list. Uh, one Dwarven Skirmisher, two Skoyatel Neophytes, two Elven Scouts, two Vryhead Dragoons, two Broccolon Sentinels, two Incinerating Traps, two Crushing Traps, Milva, Karen, Triant Boar, Mahakam Horn, Pitfall Trap, Fauv, I think, Yorvith, Milan, Aileron, Call of the Forest, Say Synthesis, and the Great Oak all come together under Eldane for a wicked list that I, for some reason, have called dragon sword yeah i guess you can say the green ranger was probably one of my favorite i used to be a billy guy back in the original power rangers day because he was the nerd in the triceratops and that's my favorite dinosaur and i was a nerd and it just all worked out well regardless doesn't matter uh this is dragon sword with eldane again the name means nothing it's just the name i wanted to use uh give it a shot and tell me what you think because it's not very straightforward and it's it takes a little finessing and practice to get this to, to win. But by the end of uh, my stream this morning, we were winning with it fairly consistently and having a lot of fun doing it. Figuring out how the pieces fall is part of the, the, the enjoyment of the deck. So you need to really give it some practice and, and get a feel for it. But I do want to hear what you think and drop your comments here on the YouTube channel. And please uh, do me a favor and hit that subscribe uh, button. It does me a big favor. If you like what you see, you can also go ahead and watch me live on twitch.tv slash watchflake or follow me on Twitter at watchflake. Thank you so much for watching. You be kind to one another and I will see you very soon. Adios.